<laughs> the beast, Beja. Uh, let us know if you see us, peeps. Okay, I'm just double checking before we get rocking and rolling into this. I'm just double checking the actual date of the last time you and I did a show. Yesterday. Hold on. So, shows here, we did... Oh my God, dude! You made me do so much without you. Waxahatchee, the show before Waxahatchee, Waxahatchee. Yeah, it was. Uh, where's the date? It was more than a month ago. On Arm TV, it says a month ago, but that is just absolutely not correct. It has been longer than that. Correct? Don't know. Bell okay, Travis, I spoke to you last night. I was like, hey, let's do a show. And you said, I'm bored. <laughs> That's super can't... busy. I said busy. You said bored. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? Travis, I, you, do you, so the last time we spoke, you got pretty heated with me. I think we should have just addressed it really quickly. Yeah, I, I can I'm trying to bring back that conversation. I can't even, I, I'm not even there anymore. Where are you at? <laughs> Dude, Where you went are you at? You went so hard that after you got off, I was like shell shocked. And I admit, as a man, I cried. No. I, no. <laughs> I did it's the truth. That is not true. It's absolutely the truth. My man, trust me, I know people. That is not true, okay? Don't worry about it. Here's the you deal. You were either... You made a mistake by thinking that you were going to felt like crying. You didn't actually cry. Okay, you... You are either a great act... Okay, do you remember when you came back? You went to Idaho, no. you... You hung oh. out with Bill Collins and then you came back and you were hard on me, but it was like a, a fake heart. It was like a playful. Am yeah. I, am I joking? But yeah. am I Bill serious? Collins said, Travis, do me a favor. And if you do this for me, I will not fuck with Gary. Yeah. I said, well, what's, what's his punishment? He said, you tell him that I am fully in pursuit of his company you hold him for a couple hours and then let him off the hook. Right. So when you do that, you are always in a area where it's like, <clears throat> there's just enough there to leave some doubt of whether you're having fun. You know, there's, there's always this line. <laughs> yeah. But, but of that course, night. That's how, I, that's how I always do it. Yes, yes, but you effed up. That's how I did it the last time we talked. No, no, no. You real dramatic. That's you you really, sold it. That's the way we rehearsed it. That's you, the way we wanted it. That's the way you got it. No, you really sold it. Like you went hard. Hey, and I was like, let, wait, wait. I can't tell. What if I'm just getting better? What if I'm getting better? Well, listen, let's just like bring up a good point. You were like, hey, man, this venue. And it's like, okay, I did I did create a scene. I was mad. I don't even remember. What are you talking about? I have no memory of what you're talking about. Listen, you're we, have to, to, we have to address it. For, be, we we have, have to address it. For, specific. You're going to have to be more specific. We have to address it for five minutes, man. When you're Dude. doing your close-up package, when you're meeting your venue people and you're signing final whatevers. Yeah. Are they... I, Three they, times I did that. Three times I did that. And are yeah. they hinting that like, oh, we wouldn't bring you back because you have fools in your midst? And no, it looks like one of your. All. Not at all. No one no. said that one time. No, no one said that. Nope. Okay, so we so Waxahachie, if it returns, it can go back to that venue. Probably you're good there. Hundred percent. 
yeah, yeah. Whatever I want to do, I could still have access. Now, one thing that sticks oh, out. Oh, my... oh, oh, oh. Under one condition. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can't come. <laughs> well, <laughs> Every... no, 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 no. I just want to make sure you know. You will not be coming back to watch that. But everybody else is more, more than welcome, is what I heard from the people. And, I, and that's what I told them. I'll get back with you. I can't guarantee you what will happen. But Okay, I, okay, I, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, well, I'm good. I'm good. Arm wrestling's good. Everybody's good to go back to Waxahachie to, and to the, to the stockyards in downtown Dallas, the greater stockyards where PRs. You are the only arm wrestler or entertainment person that is barred from PRs. Even people who have gotten a fight are allowed back in there. But the guy said, Travis, with all due respect, do not bring that guy right there back. And I was like, no problem. Okay. So one thing that sticks out in my mind is why a couple things stick out in my mind. Why, (laughs) why did you Yes. Not pull me aside with Barry Bourne and say, and like, bro it out and say, like, what you did, you said, just stop talking about it. You said, I need you to stop talking about it. In front of any people. Right. And drawing, so- do not draw too much attention to it. Simply because we have no license. We are not boxing promoters. Right. We but have then you no sp- venue. But- and last but not least, clearly, you have sh- shaken Barry the whole thing in some fashion. Now you have an active participant, one of the three of us that is all of a sudden pulling back. And this was within the first seven minutes of your arrival right okay my point is so yeah i what i want you to know is that i told you 600 times to pull it back or in whatever fashion that you right right but why didn't since you clearly you and paul italia were easy 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 no, no, Easy. No, no, no. There is no reason to say his name. And the reason is, is because then you got to, you are going to assume all of this stuff that you think that he no, was involved I, in. No, no, no. But I, simply. No, no, no. I'm only stating facts and I like Paul. The facts yeah. are Barry Bourne and Paul Italia both are on record saying that they told Barry and they talked to Barry, hey, man. Don't box. This is if you want to like improve your image, boxing Dude, is n- the entire arm wrestling world sent you, Barry Born and me, a, a a very specific, at least 80% of the world said, please stop. Everybody right. stop. And right. because right. of that, because of that, I told you 300 times before the match happened. Shut up! The match will not happen. But then in you winked. But then Just you winked. One you, tiny hope. But then you winked at me. You know, maybe. I am begging you to try to go along with the program of listen, sh- listen, listen. Let's I'm trying to sneak in I'm on them at the end. Don't be a dick. I am trying to close this out, and my point is, and if we could just all get on board, my point is. Is it would have been so Listen, much more? It's very easy for you to put this to bed. All you have to do is say, I am completely sorry to not to me. You do not have to say it to me, but for your own self, say that this has happened in the past where I have in my own brain created a manifestation of opinions 
and they have created me to go absolutely fucking nuts and wake up amidst carnage. Has that ever happened to you in the past? Yeah, thing? listen, listen, I get it. Okay. I don't know. I got to say one more thing. Yeah. My point is, at and no what about point, when Barry said, I don't have any gloves now? At that point right there, Gary, did you not think, well, I should just at least ease back one millimeter? Because at this point, <laughs> there cannot even be a fight if everyone does agree. I am clearly in a state of a fog. My point is, before okay. that moment, why didn't Barry Bourne put his arm around me and say, Gary, 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 this is like, I'm serious. I'm not joking around. Like, I've been arm wrestling. I, I. I really, to be perfectly honest every with you, video, I like you. I, hold every on. Every video that I saw, it clearly showed that Barry Bourne was not comfortable from Friday right, night. Right, not comfortable. But day, he, at Saturday, no point, at no your point. Your video did, evidence, if oh you God. showed your video evidence to the world in hopes of at the end of it, there being a poll, is in that the whole time, there would have been a massive amount of people that say this is not happening. As fine, you fine. I didn't see, see it. I didn't see it. I couldn't tell. I know I could you not didn't tell. see it. Because did you didn't see it. see it, you were a complete fucking crazy motherfucker about it. And don't get me wrong. I understand how, how offensive that you, not offensive, I shouldn't say that. How offended the YouTubing arm wrestling world was about the, the Michael Todd, Travis Bajan match that would also add fuel to your fire as to being the most stand up guy has <laughs> ever arm wrestled. Yeah, and it's you'll your be fault. Damned. I am you'll sorry. You'll be down. I am if sorry. I, ever, I am sorry, but we if do I know. Would ever disrespect my youtube fan base and you ran with that and listen i also picked up on it 10 seconds into it so i added that to the reasons that i put on this side of why i should not have gary paid i should have paid people to fuck gary up kidnap him or stomp his cameras or something i mean here's the deal Fuck the, it. Let's just of, let him keep rolling. The you end know, of okay. I know he'll stop. I know he'll stop, dude. I mean, the, 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 he, the gave, he, he put it on pretty hard on Friday night. Ludicrous. Then we get back to Saturday, and he continues to barrage, barrage, and I'm like, hey, he can't have the energy on Sunday after he does all that stuff. Dude, oh, say, God, all right, stop. God Barrett says, I was actually impressed by Gary's willingness to let Barry Bourne knock him out. That is the irony of this whole thing is that he, I was talking tough. He probably would have smashed me in like two seconds. Like, I can't believe I won in the mental game. Like, I can't believe it at all. Well, that's the thing. You probably have in the past, you are pretty uh aggressive yeah okay anyways pretty point, aggressive there fella se second secondarily on that uh jody williams we're still talking about it because this is the first time i have talked to travis since that event man tell jody shut the fuck up his whole show he talks about the same shit okay so on that conversation that you really drilled me a new one you said you have done your absolute best this weekend by posting videos that make me look horrible. Well, that's what I've gotten from every single person is what's up with Gary. And once again, I tell them the same thing I have said about Gary for the last 20 years. I do not fucking know <laughs> what the fuck is up with Gary. Dude, I, I tell the no story. control over Gary. So, uh, Church of Arm Wrestling, Jimmy G's in the chat. He brought up the fact that I, 
I the first videos I posted about Barry Born, one, they were the easiest. They were the easy. It was the easiest, uh, easiest fruit to peck from the tree. I did not watch one video. Well, the point is, the reason I put that out, one, they were the easiest, but two, I, I you know, whatever. Well, you My had point. to protect yourself. Well, you, you, know, I mean, you had, dude. you went into damage control for, oh my God, I got a great idea. Let me pretend that I am a Christian man all of a sudden who has never, ever done any sort of propaganda, right? <laughs> I wanted and to let me jump on the side of all these jackass fucking retard fucking arm wrestling fans. Let me fucking get that. And, and 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 beg them for for my uh, content and, and their approval of it. I mean, okay. it okay. is unbelievable. Okay. 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 I I felt that that's what got you off the hook. Is Let's, that I felt that you were you were uh, blinded by making sure you didn't lose any subscribers. I was blinded by that. So let's let's sum okay. that up right there. I'm that glad that I was right. You've <laughs> gone. Right. Since that weekend, you've gone MIA, completely gone. You not returning my calls, not returning my texts. And now it's been how many weeks or months? That's what are you talking about? I respond to every text. Here we are. You are a liar. What are you talking about? Listen, the point is, you said to me last night, I'm bored. I'm done. Are you done or are we back? Uh, we're back right now we are back we gotta start putting this content on my channel though okay well, well let's, I am let's, dying over here so you stated in Waxahachie because of that whole Waxahachie you stated because of that whole situation that I guess everything you're like I'm done with social media don't subscribe to my channel and then you kind of got <laughs> MA. I didn't ever say that, man. Come on, man. That's what you said. We need subscribers, but I just don't want them to be arm wrestling fans. Anybody else, please subscribe to the channel. Unless you consider yourself an arm wrestling fan, because those people I don't like. They're weirdos. And I don't want to fuck with those. Okay, guys. so you were hard on me, but then you chose to go on social media that same day, that Sunday, saying basically all your fans F you. There is no such thing as an arm wrestling fan. I've already told you that. Gary. No, but everyone Stop on your channel. That. Yes. You had I, that was to every one of those people who typed any single thing negative about the Michael Todd, Travis Bates. Those people, I hate those people. I hope those people get COVID and stay sick for the whole 13 days like I did. Okay? That's what I hope. I hope bad stuff happens to those people because they are weirdos. Okay. So to sum up, you were over – were you purposely – were you busy or you purposely were taking a step back from social media because of all the Extremely drama? Extremely busy. Extremely busy. And you were lying. You ignored my texts. Never. You're yeah. crazy. Those are lies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you might have got the rotation. You might not have liked the time you was in the rotation. But do not say ignore. Ignore is something that is presently happening. Okay, so you did, you're, there was another event in Texas, the Gnarly Gar, and you were not there. And I, I did, well, didn't know if you wanted to talk about it, but you actually got the COVID? Yes, I got COVID at that Kentucky, the true Kentucky State Arm Wrestling Tournament. When I say I got it there, I don't know if I got it there. All I know is when I drove home on April 17th, by the time I got home, I didn't feel that good. The next day it started on the 18th. And it lasted until probably May 3rd, May 4th, and it was crucial. Okay, what do you mean it started? What, did, what was the fever? Just the symptoms of being tired and then um, having a slight fever, sweaty, can't eat, 
anything, don't want to eat, but you got to take so much medicine to keep the fever and to start feeling good that you have, or it'll hurt your stomach if you don't have food on it. It was just a beast. I got all the way down to like 249, which is about 25 pounds I lost. And so, how, how much time was this before the gnarly gar? This was about 14 days before the gnarly gar. And so you're realizing, oh shit, I may not be able to go. I, it was going to be crunch time whether I could get that positive test and get on that plane right there on the 14th day. And what I was slowly figuring out is you could get the rapid test right away, but they also got to send that culture out. And it's always a two day wait. So there's just the time frame wasn't going to work out. And honestly, I didn't have enough energy to travel. I mean, I had already, that was at my, you know, that was right before it got over right there on that Saturday, Sunday, I just started feeling where I'm like, okay, I'm going to be all right. It was tough, tough. Craig Herba says it makes me feel good to see Gary get treated like a child. He acts exactly like a child. Thank you, Craig. Uh, we have a super chat. Uh, fart, <laughs> fart McAss. I wouldn't read those. I wouldn't read those out loud. Bro. Could Travis's <laughs> shoulders be any smaller? He is very feminine. <laughs> you got to. That's a good one. Someone's Did that guy pay you to say that? Yeah, paid two bucks. Thank you, Fart McAss. <laughs> uh, uh, read the comments before you read them to yourself. Jody Williams, Travis, you're a funny guy. I'd smack you. <laughs> so uh, what happened? Did I, Jody pay? No, no, he did not pay. Oh, don't read anything if they don't pay, bro. Oh, I interact. I love to interact with the comments. That's the best part. Oh, the crazier that. the comments are, the more I want to read them. <laughs> so, hey, I, man, how about Savon Matosian is just spitting knowledge, spitting knowledge every day on Instagram. Dude, I'm not. I'm not following. What? What? Dude, he's just. I don't know. He got me watching his podcast. Listening to the little excerpts. Yeah, I got to I I dumped Ooh. Instagram. I cannot do YouTube and Instagram. It's too much. I got you. I got okay, you. Okay, I, I want to talk about this gnarly guard because this is my like worst nightmare to promote yeah. an event and then not be able to go. Like how in the world? How does that's the scariest thing of like all time? Yeah, it was terrible. And then, yeah, you know, you got to. You got to deem somebody in charge. You got four or five investors that are all there that the reason they invest mostly is because I can take care of everything, you know, when the tournament starts. Um, so, yeah, it was very tricky. So, wait, wait, wait. They take care of what don't they invest because they really want to hang out with Travis Bajan also. Um, well, yeah, I think that I'm like, saying one no one's going to invest in an event that you are not going to be at. Right. Well, yeah, but I think that for those guys, the investment is uh, has more to do with the ability to run things as well. The hanging out, those investor guys, they already um, know me and have hung out with me plenty. Right. So they're involved. Their involvement has a lot to do with the, um, the potential of making money and having a great event because they know I can run it and they don't have any trouble. So right away, it was scary thinking about the brackets and the announcing and the referees and, you know, just all the bullshit shipping the trophies early, you know, it, there was just tons of stuff that ended up having to happen. The good thing was Lance Hunt, Paul Italia, all of those guys, Stan, Peach, they all kind of got together and they learned a lot because they didn't have anybody to really fall back on. Um, and, you know, that's, I don't know if it's the best way, but it is definitely a way is to throw yourself in there and um, kind of figure, you know, have that shit get figured out. So you, in the end, are you saying there might be a positive that they had to scramble and and, well, there's no doubt. And, well, first of all, every one of them was super understanding and appreciative. And I, I know firsthand that Lance and Paul 
got to get in there a little bit and see all the stuff. And really, it made all of them call me and say, Trav, we had no idea what a bad fucking dude you are. So, um, you know, kudos to, you know, how easy you make that look. And I said, no problem. Somehow, you know, I ended up, you know, maybe getting another client or another crack at it um, just because I wasn't there. I know the answer to this question, but Fox 8-Ball asked, Travis, since Barry Bourne has come on the scene, have you intentionally been trolling and annoying Gary? Um, uh, yeah, I know. I don't even know what trolling and annoying Gary. I don't, I don't, well, pretty I don't much know. since pretty much since you left the scene, everyone's like, oh, we thought Travis and Gary were tight, but apparently Travis's relationship with Barry Bourne is more important. That's kind of right. how the community right. felt. So, I, yeah, because me and Barry play tennis every day. So, yeah, I got you. you <laughs> you're sneaking in that footage from TMZ of us hanging out all the time. Yeah. I guess. So, listen, I'm going to tell the arm wrestling world one more time. I am super married, and I got four of them, four youngins, two of them are starting quarterbacks for their teams. That's very important to me. And this spring right now, it's all happening, right? So we are football, football, football. And then every once in a while, we think about football. Everything else we really don't care about. And I love my life. Love it. Arm wrestling? Ah! Very shaky. I mean, so. But I mean, it, up on it pays your ease bills. Up. So you got to continue. You got to continue doing this show because isn't it good for your sponsors? You know what? There was a great uptick. There was a great uptick in everything. However, my excitement level that I could bring to the show was very important as well. So, you know, you got to stay excited and it's hard to do with the media and the fucking weirdos. It's very hard to do. But there's like, so, I mean, I know you never left the sport. So you're probably like, eh, I've seen big stuff come and go, but the community really feels like this time it's different. This whole Devin Larratt, Michael Todd match in Dubai, Larry wheels. You know, we Alex have is- never been so low as we are now. <laughs> I mean, what are we talking about? We so we have been, we were, listen, the YouTube world has taken over boxing. This Jake Paul shit is 100% means that it is actually possible to take over a multi, what is boxing? million or billion dollar industry. I think it's a billion dollar industry, billions of dollars, right? Right now, currently the hottest ticket is the biggest, baddest YouTuber. That's just a reality. And in the arm wrestling world, the entire super match card that you feel is important is nothing but fucking YouTubers. There is no legitimacy there behind any part of it. And what, wait, what I, are you talking about? YouTubers. You wait, bye, 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 bye. Dude, don't don't be ignorant. You just literally talked about a YouTuber being powerful enough to step into the boxing world and change the game. Yet you're saying not change the game, not change the game, ruin the game. There is well, no more legitimate boxing. Boxing is fucked. We are, we wish we were boxing. So now you must know that for the rest of our arm wrestling lives, it will be online promoting one on one matches against personalities. There will never be arm wrestling for money, it will be arm wrestling as the platform or content that allows money to be made on the back end to the videographer, which is, I guess is okay for, but I'm not a videographer. I fucking hate it. 
So think about it. Like, I mean, I, dude, you just, I am, you, you just segued into my dude. I, that's what you said we can't do or will no longer do. It's going to be 100% my focus. So maybe they will always be the stars, but I'm going to still keep plugging away over here because I don't want anything to do with one-on-one. -on -one. It's too stressful. I want to offer right. big pi prize pots and hope people come and make a cool show out of it and, uh, and, and ride. Yeah, the I know, but still the fact is, is, your what is your big big prize pot? Oh well, it ain't big today. That's what I mean. But where where does it go to? What do you mean? Where does your big big prize pot get equal when you're when when you when what makes you happy? What's the prize pot? I mean, is it a hundred thousand okay. dollars? Is it five thousand? What's the, the big number for a guy? And how many opportunities does he have? to try to make that money. I mean, I think it would be awesome to start having, if I could host events, I always said this in the back, I wanted a 20 grand budget once a month, 20 grand budget. And the first place would be like 6,500. I feel that if I could have one event a month given away first for 6,500, I could create enough excitement Cause here's the facts. Even if, even if Larry wheels, this, the, this, uh, production with Devin and Larry, the, here's the just true, honest to God facts. You couldn't, you couldn't have an exciting card. Like every, like at some point you're going to run out of athletes on the one-on-one, -on -one. you know what I mean? Let's say, I went to Larry wheels and I say, okay, my budget is 50 grand a, a month. I want you to have, I want you to generate that kind of buzz. Larry, Michael, how many months in a row could you generate that kind of buzz? I mean, every, right. could you do it for 12 months in a row for six months in a row? I feel in the sport of arm wrestling, your title cards begin to get thin at some point. Like, you know what I mean? How many people I can agree. beat? So, like, for instance, let's say Jake Paul does box Floyd Mayweather or whatever, and they make a huge killing. You know, what's what's the next? Are they just going to – you're saying they're just going to keep plugging in another boxer? Like, at some point – No, the they will – whatever – just that world, boxing will be legitimately – just two people from a promoting standpoint that already have the followers. So it'll be Jake Paul and Larry wheels next time boxing. So you're <laughs> it'll, saying the it'll be. Yeah. And this dude, the, uh, 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 it's a hundred percent box professional boxing's fault that they were completely sleeping at the wheel that they could be taken over by a YouTube celebrity. Well, or it just really shows the power of, the YouTube and the followers. And if your focus is there, your athletic ability is now more hyped than it should be, which is exactly what's happening in Dubai. I mean, people are asking you to be so impressed with the card when you're looking at the card and you're like, who are these guys? These are the YouTube guys. Okay, I got I got to address something. Jamie Sheldon says 20k a month. Your revenue do, needs. Listen, Jamie, I say 20k a month because at one point, I had a sponsor give me twenty thousand dollars to give away, one hundred percent in prize money. I didn't use a dollar for the functioning of the event, so I was able to find somebody to give me twenty grand once a year for three straight years. When I run. I hate to keep using like Alex's channel, but when I run the numbers and the figures on what that channel does, if arm TV had those same kind of numbers, one, the, here's the beauty about when you have money is like, I use the Oscars, for example, like the Oscars, the people who go to the Oscars, they don't need, they don't need fancy gift packages yet. 
they're receiving thousands of dollars in this or that closing. It's like once you made it, then that's when the money really comes flowing in. So it's like to think how big does arm TV have to be before a title sponsor would put up 20 K a month to be the title sponsor of our TV show. It's not out of the realm of impossibility when another channel's already doing it. And it's a hundred percent write off. Like when we generate 20 K, if I turn around and spend that, that's, that comes off the bottom line. So I'm not paying taxes on that amount my taxes are getting reduced yeah, well, you're, what you're forgetting is that uh you are you must be saying that you're willing to work for free um because you already have your bills taken care of when guys like alex and the rest of them are using the money from from the revenue to live yeah yeah well i'm not saying that i would use a what i'm saying is when the channel's small I'm willing to work for free. At some point, I'm going to need a return. Well, yeah, no doubt. I'm, I'm just saying, you're, how much money does the Arm TV YouTube channel have to pay you in order for you to do $20,000 a month? In sponsorship, meaning you got to make 30, you got to make 40. What the fuck? I don't know. But you know. Okay. I use the math from Arm TV. I have, when I was, taking subscribers i had 2400 lifetime members and i used to tell people like dude you just got to stay a member now 2400 lifetime members at 20 grand or 20 dollars would have been forty eight thousand dollars in in gross revenue now obviously jamie's correct you gotta that was being utilized for my yeah, but you didn't pay no taxes or shit you use every bit of that dollar. <laughs> yeah yeah well no i didn't generate my best month with Arm TV was $78,000. My best year. $78,000 was my best year of Arm TV and I did not pay I did not pay $1 in taxes. <laughs> I mean, once you add up all the hotels, <laughs> rental, airfare, yeah. equipment, tape and all the yeah, all the stuff that you could write off. Yeah, it's crazy. My point here Here's my point that I just have to get to. I'm not like Devin Laird is the star. The channel, the people that come to his channel are to see Devin Laird. Michael Todd, his star is going up. People come to the channel to see Michael Todd. Larry Wheels is the star. People come to his channel to see Larry Wheels, but now he's helping do these matches where Arm TV, I am not the star. So I I want I don't want to do one-on-ones because I just, I just don't want to do one-on-ones. I, I don't think I can maintain. I just can't do it. I like open events where I put a big ass carrot and everyone's like, Oh, I want some of that. And then I make a show out of it. Like the CrossFit games, you know, they just, they do the open. They see who makes it to the final. It's very easy to tell a story that way. And then people can get excited and it's a way to meet new, new blood. So arm TV in order for arm TV to be successful, I have to have a carrot. That's not me. And right now I need a, I need prize money. So okay, we're get, totally getting off track. My point is, is I believe that with all that cool stuff happening, that there's a little path for me to take where I can accomplish some of the things I want to accomplish. And yeah, uh, listen, I'm glad that, you are uh, happy about the state of YouTube and arm wrestling, but I'm just letting you know from a performance athlete standpoint, it has never ever been so depleted of financial gain ever. There is no money out there at all for the athlete. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. I, okay chat they're mad because uh, listen listen chat 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 I, if i'm engaged in conversation i cannot read every single thing so it's like <laughs> if, you, if you want put up a super chat if you want ah, your stuff to be written we will even then I've questions been... when we have a financial gain yeah i fuck you people 
So let me just scan. Would Travis pull in Dubai if they gave him a match? No, no, no. I am not a sideshow. I am not a undercard guy. I am the main event of the evening, son. I will not participate in no bullshit YouTube scam. I hate YouTube. But I would love to announce a referee or being in someone's corner. Uh, I'm just trying to read the Larry, my home. Blah, blah, blah. I don't see what questions I've missed so far. It keeps <laughs> chat, chat, super chat, super chat. You keep saying Jake Paul is just a YouTuber, but remember the world already knew who Jake Paul was before his match. I mean, he was a very successful YouTuber by doing crazy shit. What do you mean? Uh, he was a YouTuber way before boxing. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Is. I mean, he got his celebrity status from YouTube. Cobra Vavoda, will Travis answer questions? Ask your questions. No, uh, the- not if anybody has Vavoda on their screen name. I will not answer any questions. Chris Gamma, $5 super chat. I think I found oh, a way to mix arm wrestling with the mortgage real estate industry, aiming to test my theory in quarter four in Arizona. Big ticket sales equal big money. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm in. I'm in. I mean, you want to sell. Hit me up. Travis Bajor1 at Gmail. Travis Bajor1 at Gmail. Let's get in there. I love it. How do you mix real estate and mortgage with arm wrestling? Okay, Travis. I got to talk to you about something. So you remember I hated. Oh, 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 okay. Sorry. I've been talking to Corey Miller about his program with brackets. And why do you, you seem to only use paper brackets. Is that correct? Well, I am trying to be as efficient and understanding as possible. I know that if you use a computer bracket, there is no deviation. And I also do not like just having one laptop open. I like it when I can have multiple brackets in front of me that I don't have to click in and out of, right? Because I'm running multiple tables with multiple weight classes. So for me personally, I have done both of them and it is way more expensive to be on point from a, um, computer bracket format wait i i i feel like we almost just glossed over something yeah. are, are you saying that with the paper brackets you're able to fudge the brackets I yes kinda, yes like here's what it means like- here's what it means here's what it means at 12 o'clock the guy gives you 120 dollars and he's pulling in four weight classes when you have a a bracket a, a one laptop in front of you and you have ran the br- two matches inside the bracket and the guy walks up and says, Hey, Travis, or matter of fact, right before the bracket starts. And he just says, Hey, Trav, my arm is killing me from that master's class. Pull me out of that thing. No problem. Now I got to go back in there and make sure that he's out of the bracket before I can start it. It doesn't, I can't do anything with that fucking laptop until that fix is made. Okay. If one match into the, uh, the weight class, one match into the weight class, I call the second match and the guy walks up and says, Hey, Trav, I'm not supposed to be in that class. I told the guy I was pouring right and left masters, just right in the open. That is a legitimate mistake. That's easy to make. Right. Yeah. With a paper bracket, I can cross that guy's name out, look, make a new bracket with that first match that already happened is the first match of the one that I just knew when I just filled out, right? If I have electronic bracket, I've got to reshuffle the bracket. Then I've got to manually move names to get to that match. Hopefully click it enough times that the first match that I already ran is back up. And the bracket's workable. Meantime, I only got one fucking bracket, one laptop. So what I really need are three people with the ability to work that 
that program. One person to always change the bracket whenever somebody new comes. And while he or she is doing that, I can still run the other two tables because I've got multiple bra uh, uh, laptops lit up, right? So after this guy makes the adjustment, we can just move on to the 198s over here. And if I don't like that, I just shift over to the left and say, pull up the 220 bracket. I have an insurmountable way to shuffle. If you have three people plus your announcer to work your brackets, by all means, if you've got that kind of budget, do it. I watched Bill Collins in the Hawthorne thing. That was one table boring, long as shit. Long day. Travis Bajan, I'm rocking two tables with paper brackets and I am moving and I am going over speed bumps 30 miles per hour because it's so easy to fix. That's all. I mean, that's a, I'd be curious to know Corey Miller's response to that. Cause I've been talking to him cause he's trying, he says there's a, a resistance from people to go from paper to uh, electronic Valerio Lucy Luce says question for Travis, Travis, what are you talking about? This is a USA situation. Top eight is very good in Europe. Yeah, it's so good that I fall asleep every episode. It is so good. Yeah. Boring. That is the most boring shit I have ever watched. And mostly because I don't even understand what the fuck they're saying. Get the fuck out of here. This is the United States of America. We need to be entertained. That is some bullshit Olympics flashy ass thing the fucking view is so far away the rules are horrid and you already know who's gonna win the top eight before it starts because there's only one top eight guy the rest of the guys the other seven guys are trying to run their own promotion their own youtube and shit or their own league the fuck out of here with that shit it is not entertaining it is not entertaining okay I have made you've left you really left me hanging, man, because you abandoned me. I yeah. I've been finalizing my idea for a format and I could never bounce, I couldn't bounce the ideas off of you, a hole. You crushed it. I've been reading it and looking at it. It's all perfect. Okay, so here's what I'm I I want to thank you because you helped me realize. I hope I need to do I need to do a a double you elimination. Need to go to counseling. You need to go to counseling. Yeah, I need to get down to my top eight. I would have been doing top sixteen probably. And that I'm having I'm having the Dave Patton Classic on July thirty first. I am having eight way classes. The winner will get into the RT and format, and that's how we're going to work this thing out. So <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I'm rocking it. So you've been paying attention. What I love about this thing is I feel like you're so limited by these weight classes. And if we just take everyone divided by eight, then it gives a very balanced. It, you're doing two things. You're having complete exclusivity for that, that little weight, meaning any guys like it, the, the Hawthorne, we ran that. There's seven guys in the 340 range and only one guy who weighs 340 something is going to get into that final eight. If you're, you're like, oh, I don't even have to arm wrestle those guys until I got to get to the final eight. So there's exclusivity. In fact, that it's very tight to get to that, that top seed. But at the same time, it's inclusive that the, the lightest guy can get down there. And I love that. Every, every guy who thinks. I got news for you. It's not even, there's going to be a light guy in the final four. Not even the top eight. Well, I'm sorry. If you continue to run that single elimination bracket, that's what it, it's exactly what that does. It breaks everything down and it really becomes how efficient are you against the guys that weigh as much as you 
on your way to victory. No, I changed it. I changed it. We're going, we're doing eight brackets down to the top guy. The top guy is the final. So the final eight will be a, the eight different seeds from eight. different. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just, I'm going to go ahead and ease some of their minds since they're programmed to pay attention to these weight class numbers. I'm just going to do the 54, 65, 76, 87, 98, 220, 242, and plus. And I'm going to show them what the bracket would look like if we didn't have the classes. And I'm going to show them why now it's fucking retarded because you got 19 guys in one class and only two guys in the other, which makes that guy so fresh at the end. But because our arm wrestling world and we're always tweaking stuff, I'm just going to give them one more opportunity to see that if everyone comes in different weights, it all works out beautifully. Yeah. I love it. So I, the, and the, here's the thing, dude, I spend a lot of time as a producer, when I want to cut like a show doing the six classes, that's extremely difficult as, as an editor to cut six shows highlighting six champions with this other format you get somebody from each class to get into the final you interview them as you go give them their little moments when they you know did something exciting but at the end of the day i'm gonna crown one champion so when the day starts who's gonna be the man easy storytelling boom hand the hand the belt to the man like it so you're in. Yeah, I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm definitely going to do three or four of those tournaments a year that ended in an ROT and format. 100%. Yeah, but you're going to do it with or without me. Do you trust that uh, I won't cause drama? I'm doing the next one without you. I know that much. <laughs> 100% okay. Without you. Because uh, it's a big fundraiser for my football team. I can't have you up there acting like a fucking flick toy okay. getting kicked out. So just to clear up, you and I are, we're cool. We're friends. We're golden. golden. I know it's crazy. You're asking me that golden. Well, you, you did ignore my stuff, dude. I mean, come what on. What are you talking dude. about? Dude. Everyone gets ignored by me at some point in their life. Just means I'm busy, bro. Okay. So last night we've been talking. Oh, can you just chime in? I, I, dude, I'm, I want, Okay, so after watching arm wrestling, I feel that all you mofos are too strap dependent, and I want to do uh, add a power hook in between for the strap. What Retarded. Retarded. All you have to do if you want to get rid of the strap uh, dependency is don't tighten the strap. Just put it on and don't tighten it, and it's over. I mean, your whole situation is perfect. You don't have to worry about anything. Just don't say, tighten the strap. Say that again. Say, whoa, 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 whoa. But Do not open. tighten the strap and there will still be movement. That's what you're getting, right? That tight strap will not let you manipulate your hand inside the other guy's hand anymore, right? You can't do it. So if you allow that strap not to be tightened, to just be applied, you will, it, it's over and you should apply it as soon as they get there. Just don't tighten it. That's the way you should do it. I was also discouraged by how long it took to put on the strap. I agree. That's why you got to make sure you either put it on right away or you make it harder so that you don't have to put it on as much. But to me, way easier to put it on, just not tighten it. Well, I don't like, I, I and again, I wanted to, Talk did you me. note? Did you note in your brain the efficiency of me strapping and refing, up as opposed to how many matches that I got done, as opposed to the other people? Dude, see, where have you been? I literally made I made a video of the examples <laughs> of me saying that I'm the best ref that ever lived. I am 100 the best ref. There is an arm wrestling. Oh, shit. You didn't know I did this? No, what'd you do? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dude, 
Holy shit, bro. What you got? Okay, just stand by. Stand by. Screen share. Can you see the logo? Watch. I timed everyone. I compared oh, nice. I compared you, Matt Craig, and Scott Wynn. Oh no. Because I was it ate up so much time for my show having to watch you guys put on a strap. It really drove me nuts, bro. I bet. So we're at 25 seconds. As soon as you pulled down the Titan, we cut you off. So you were the fastest. Then uh, Scott Wynn averaged probably like 40 seconds. And Matt Craig almost went to a minute. Yeah. Like, dude, to me, that's like a deal killer. I want to talk about the intentional, the intentional slip. I don't yeah. like, I don't like that. There's, there's so much vagrant attempts to get in the strap. Well, and that's that another thing by you not tightening that strap guys will stop being so, you know, what did you say? Vagrant. They like blatant, <laughs> blatant. blatant. <laughs> yeah. Blatant. I'm with you. I'm with you. So you're saying I could avoid that. I'm totally down with. Yeah. So as soon as they get there, it's on. You put the strap on. It doesn't have to be tight. Just has to be applied. And it's a wrap. I mean, don't get me wrong. Once every about as many, about twice as many times as people break their arm, people are going to get out of that strap because it's not tight enough, but it rarely, rarely happens. What it really causes is for you to keep your hand tight and strong enough that people do not get out of it. You, that's what's happening is you can't get out of it once they tighten that strap. And if you get put in a dominant position, the strap just enhances it. Because yeah, but it if you tight. look, so in my format, when I want to have, you know, we're having talking about 70, 80 matches, you, that's 30 seconds. You're the fastest at 30 seconds. That's yeah. a long, that's a long time to apply the strap. I don't think you can. Do I agree. And don't get me wrong. You can also have more judgment calls with your referees being granted that, right? Like I, if I had one, if I had uh, Charles Fisk and Bart Wood with me every single week, then I could put some pretty awesome rules because I know I have them. They're competent. And I'm confident and I'm there that we can do this. When I'm dealing with a variety of referees, I want to take the judgment call out of any of the guys because most of the time, the referee's a bum. You know what I mean? Uh, hey, Tice. Yeah. Will you call DM? So yeah. have, you, have you paid attention to the uh, Devin Laird, Michael Todd rules? No. Have you paid attention at all? Are you not excited? Are you? Is it a jealousy thing that you're not excited? Like you wish you yes. were out there? Yes. Yes. Completely. I mean, I hate all those people. You could have been. What does that have to do with me still hating them because they're doing something? I'm just saying you that's a hundred percent your fault. You didn't maintain active arm wrestling activity because you. Okay. Okay. It's my fault that I hate them. Okay. Well, as a fan of arm wrestling, it's like clearly you helped. There's no such thing as a fan of arm wrestling. I've already told you. You're an idiot. Arm wrestling fans are dweebs. <laughs> Come on, the fuck out of here. You can't even tell people that. You Big can't be Kev a fan of something and be too afraid to tell people you are. Big Kev 619 SD. Big Beast fan. Did y'all hear anything about any California on arm wrestling tournaments coming up? Yes, I think um, it's happening, right? Uh, Tom Nelson. Yeah, Tom Nelson. And, and all those guys, right? Yeah, when is it? And who else is it? Um, Derek Smith and Tony. 
I think they're all meeting in the San Diego at Grinders Gym and getting it on here very soon. I, I can't wait for California to be completely open for a guy like me. I love coming to Cali. So you know, are things getting better? What's 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 the status out there in Great California yet? Oh, Which that's what I for, that's what I forgot to ask you at the Waxahachie. You gave me grief for being a, where I'm wearing a mask. Do you think you should have wore a mask in uh, Kentucky? A hunch, dude. I didn't even think COVID was real. I thought it was a fucking joke. And then it almost I got so sick. I got up one day about day four, grabbed some jewelry, costume jewelry from Casey's, had a cross. I put the cross on, went back to bed. I thought I was a goner. 100% thought it was bullshit. JP Wapachi says, hi, Gary. This Is this about renting the place money? You said the straps take a lot of time. More time, the more you lose money for renting the place. Uh, no, JP, I'm 100% focused on uh, the audience. In order for me to attract a non-arm wrestling audience, I, I think the strap is a deal killer. Like if I'm having my mom watch something and she's completely like, man, that's a lot of time. I'm, I'm, I'm bored. Click, click on something else. Uh, I want to bring back the Velcro strap. Why did that get removed since I was last? Cause it school? wouldn't get tight enough. <laughs> Is that why? hundred percent. It wouldn't get tight enough. Wouldn't get tight enough. And it had those two, those two surfaces that allow it to stick would also be pretty thick in between the thumbs. But, but that's the same. They would both feel the thickness. So it, you would, but it is, it does get kind of, you know, it gets tricky in there. And as you notice too, those two services start to swell up as the strap becomes used, you know, just like any part of those Velcro, when you keep pulling it away, it kind of blows up that one area. So before long, there's a pretty significant little thing up there between your thumbs. But so in a little our, bit of a design difference, and that thing could be thin between, and then on each side, kind of come down. So I wouldn't be afraid to use that at all when it comes to if it helps you with quickness. Sign uh, that arm wrestling has not ever made it the fact that on a big event, you could be using a strap that's two years old. I mean, come on, use a brand new strap. Yeah, I got you. For instance, somebody take note, the Michael Todd and the Devin Laird match. If that strap is not brand new. Is that a Velcro? Are they using a Velcro strap? No, no, but it should be brand new strap. What are be... the rules? Are there any crazy rules for them? Well, one. Uh, so... Not that I'm interested at all. At all. So I've got my notes here. The first thing he said about is Devin, when he's picking a side, he always wants his palm facing the ref. And uh, they, ever, they were talking about the buckle last night. Is that, does it, it really matter whether you win or lose? Do you always lose when you have the buckle, Travis? Never. I don't do any of that. But if I think that my opponent cares, then I will argue and protest all the way. So hopefully Mike stood up and they have to, they have to flip a coin for that, right? Well, they said they, uh, Mike already lost a challenge for that. So Devin gets okay. the pick. All first. right. So there was some sort of a challenge for it. Um, yeah. I got you. It's not the uh, worst. They, they hinted that there would be video reviews. What do you think about that? I mean, why not? Yeah. I mean, there's, if there's a way to get to the bottom of what the fuck happened, then great. You know, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. Uh, Devin Laird said something about it could be a foul if you take one foot off the ground. I well, never... usually, oh, one foot? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, it, I don't it, know. In their rules, it's they both feet. Well, Devin should be careful because he uses his feet more than Michael Todd. Devin's a rapper and a pusher and, and a lot of stuff in the middle of the match. So the one of the I biggest. I think he's ready, though. I think it's about 50 50 at my end. I don't know who's going to win that thing. One of the kind of interesting things that came about in their rules is that they are going to do and forgive me if I get this wrong chat <laughs> but 
if there is a foul significant enough that position is gained, they will stop the match and apply a foul. If the foul is small enough where no position is gained, they would call a running foul. And then the running foul wow. would, would happen. Well, the good thing is they got Bill Collins over there. So you could guarantee that Bill Collins is going to be a dick when this is over. Every motherfucking person is going to swear that the rules and the refing were just horrific. And the reason is, is because everybody has their own rules. And whether they think that, I mean, ain't no one going to forgive an elbow foul if their guy loses. It'll be the worst ref, the worst ref event that ever lived. And there's no way to justify that you change the rules to the community. Now, I've been a supporter of the, uh, I, I remember back in the day, Leonard Harkless had no no position gain, no call. I liked yep. it. It kept good matches. Yeah, going. listen, Leonard Harkless is a professional referee. There is no problem. No one has a problem with Bill Collins and Leonard Harkless and any of the main guys that are legitimately goofy enough to care about refereeing. All right, like that's what they do. So no, that's not they, my point. My point is they, why no, don't listen, we? So I just want you to know that they can, they can, you can give them some authority to make some game time, common sense um, decisions. What you have to be careful with is if you have a hundred people and you say, go, do you really want all hundred of those people telling you whether that was a significant foul or a non significant foul? Was that a slip in the winning position legit? Did they understand? Like we've all seen the slips that the guy who the guy who gets called for losing was simply holding on to a hand that he totally dominated. And that particular guy pushed, let limp wrist, whatever he did towards his pen pad. The guy who's on the defense is simply holding on. Right. And he gets called with either a loss or a slip in the losing position. So you have to be careful about the rules and how precise they are when you have a lot of different people doing the job. So for me, you can either decide two ways. Always have Leonard Harkless and the same two refs with you every single event so that you can give them some latitude on on how they want to handle their business and you trust and believe them or you could try to open up a franchise where then you have to be as broad as possible because if you start giving any referee in the world the authority to call close calls because of what he or she feels is a slip in the lose position and they don't have the background or the experience in the to see all the different scenarios so they can make it an informed decision, it might just be easier to strap it up if they don't get pinned, right? Because that takes less skill, right? No matter how dominant you were, if you didn't pin him, we're going to put that strap on because that broad rule allows a lot of different reps to get around. You know, guys like Leonard Harkless, that's, you know, that guy there, he could call that match all he wants, right? Look at that. There you go. If you tell me that you read a piece of paper that says that that guy now is at nine o'clock in the losing position and their hands separate, but we know as arm wrestlers that that, that match needs and must be strapped up. And depending on the rules, whether the guy could just push straight down and get that win or not. That's in itself a whole nother can of worms. And without which guy can push down. So the guy that's on top, if he wants to just legitimately push straight down, he will either be pinned on his side of the table or he will have pinned the other guy because it doesn't matter if you pin the guy on your side or the other side of the table. So what, what should it be? Well, I believe the WAF rule right now is that you cannot pin someone 
on their side of the table. So this match is either going to be slip, hopefully, or this ball headed guy, if my man decides to push straight down, he will then pin himself on that guy's side of the table. And that would be a win for the ball headed guy underneath. What, what, this is Todd Opitz. Yeah, you know. I know Todd. So he uh he slipped out going straight straight across. Nice. And did they, they call a win or did they strap they, it up? They called a slip. But I was wondering, should that be a foul when I'm just my hands completely open and I'm just pulling away? That's an intentional foul. Intentional I guess slip. you could say that, but you know that I mean that's a tough are you gonna foul Jerry Cataret every match? I was I, would it make for interesting television if you to force that guy to hold on? You're just going to force him to hold on. Yeah, but I will tell you this. The loose strap takes care of all that, too. So you just got to, you know, that's what I'm saying, man. You better, yeah, if you're going to call that a slip and Todd Opitz loses because of the intentional slip, you better have a referee that's competent. And he's got to make that same call every time. And it's a tough one. That's a okay, tough one. I I announced that I was going to do power hooks for slips at my event. And Bill Bill Logsdon, he said, it is absolutely horrible that I could control a dude, flop his wrist, and, uh, and he slips out, and then you're going to start us in a hook. And my question to you is, why is Bill – Bill Logston assuming that a guy who has a weak wrist is going to suddenly be dominant in a hook. Why not why dominant, is- not dominant. It's just, you got to understand that guy like Bill Logston is, is arm wrestling like everyone else to the path of least resistance. So if I can take the guy's hand, that is the path of least resistance. Now the, that power hook is a whole nother animal, whole nother animal. Because and no one, do, because no one does it, it makes me want to know. Well, would that be good television if we tried it? Well, listen. Your goal is to make as much, uh, um, uh, you make enough arrangements so that the best product comes for what you want, and it is probably going to hurt some people's feelings. You know, like that would be. Now you're going to have the hooker intentionally slipping more than ever. Yeah, but I'm going to call intentional slip fouls. Right. So a guy like Bill Logsdon just has to stay in the game and hope that your referee gives him those intentional slips. So that'll be his wins because why would the hooker hold on, not take a chance on the referee giving him the intentionals if he knew that if, by God, if he could just get out, and, he's, and then if you're Bill, if you're Bill Logsdon, do you lose on purpose every match that gets put in the hook to try to keep your hand and arm fresh for the matches that you come back that you can dominate the hand and get the fouls called? So you think about a guy like Bill Collins, Bill, think about Bill Logsdon only pulling when he wins on intentional slip fouls and then every time he gets put in the hook, not trying so he doesn't blow his arm up. I'm you watched the Greg Gray, Matt Craig match, correct? I did. I'm really upset about the very beginning that Greg Gray like refused to arm wrestle, not going you have to know that the that's the climate. That's the climate that we're in. The WAL has set a precedence that if you tell people that you want to do a WAL rules, WAL anything, they're one on ones now. The guy can walk up and does not have to do anything. 30 seconds later, they strap it up, put it in the set grip. So in Greg Gray's defense, that is an active procedure. There's just no doubt about it. What he huh? needed to know that this was not WAL one-on-one rules. It was WAL tournament rules, which means that you do got to get out. A, How did we evolve to a world that if I go up and I F around in my grip, that I'm automatically WAL rewarded to a strap? The, same, the WAL went through the same dilemma you went through, is they can't stand this process and how long it takes. 
to set the match, have them slip every time, and then strap it up every time. So they avoided that. They knew that if one guy wanted the straps, which is almost 90% of the time, that their rule system would allow him to get in the strap in order because they want the match to happen. They were not interested in having so many matches that you would want to call fouls for slipping in a losing position. And things. Okay, so you just solidified my decision. You're telling me 90% of the world wants a strap. You got a power. I want to try the power hook. I, I can't believe our arm wrestlers are so dependent on the strap. Am I, am I incorrect? And in, if I review, just, all you're going to do is change the person that wants the strap. That's all. But like, if I review all my all my old footage, every guy, am I sitting? Hold on, let me finish. Am I sitting down and I'm and am I saying to myself, God, why did Gary not cut out all the non-strap arm wrestling matches? They're terrible. Every match out of a strap is horrible. Why did he even air that? He should just cut right to the strap every time. I am not. When I watch videos, I am not thinking that to myself. God. Don't show that. Don't show that. I showed the 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 I show the first match, the battle, and then the finger to shin, and then a slip, and then I cut to them getting the, the strap on and they arm wrestle. So when there's a strap match, there's always two matches. There's the before and the after. And now in today's world, you've completely eliminated, or wall or whoever completely eliminated yep. the, the good but great arm wrestling that existed before the slips so much so that arm wrestlers and wax ads. Here's my favorite uh, two guys uh, ready. Go. They both let go strap it up. It's like, what that is so horrible. Yeah. That so armor. now you're going to spend a lot more time talking to about the fouls. Like you're going to have to have some explanations. There are going to be people battling. You're going to have more starts too. So, don't be a uh, don't be um, naive enough to think that that might slow down the pace as well. So okay, you bring up a great point. I am I'm I'm airing the 2007 Mohegan Sun. Did you invent the uh, the set grip, the webbing? Lower your thumbs. Yes. Don't move. Go. Yes. You invented that. One hundred percent. For real, hundred percent. Only to speed up the process. Oh, uh, dude, I'm watching. So there was a match. Galen Russell's the ref. <clears throat> He's like, he he flicks wrist, 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 wrist. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, ba 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 ba. Then some guy shifts and then he comes back. No, wrist, wrist. Wrist, wrist, okay. <laughs> For like ever. Forever. I could, I'm going to share a clip and I'm like, oh my God, this is, it does work. The, the, the thing that doesn't work is when bitches keep trying to. Oh well, yeah, that's why I, it's so, for me, it's so, you have to have so much energy as the ref to get through the process, call the foul, do the process again call the foul, go through the process and have the match. If you are, if you're slow in between that stuff, or you care so much about the explanation of the foul, we're in the same position that we are not firing matches off. The, the guy needs to be energetic yet robotic, never stopping, never stop. So someone said, did Travis really invent the set grip? The ref grip back in the day was, I'm going to close your hand. Do you yeah, want I to invented, I invented, not invented. I am the cause of the new WAF, meaning that the, the second ref would come, grab your wrist, and not allow any pronation as they're setting the fingers. At the very beginning of my career, you could wrist curl to get a grip. Then they would turn you out and say, go. I got so good at that, that they decided to not let us risk curl. And they changed that because of me and knowingly and because of me. After that, 
I then went to another level and was like, yo, as soon as those people get to the table, we need to move. So as soon as they get to the table, let's find out what's really happening. And let's let them close their own hands. That way they can't argue with us as to why their thumb is or isn't showing. It's here. The reason I like it is because when you're aligning the webbing, your wrist has to be straight and you can't move it. It makes so much more sense than you're doing this and the ref is trying to get it straight. It's yeah, like, plus people don't understand giving them a minute is a long time to get straight. Yeah, I can't it's believe after the minute they call the they call the set grip. So now we're looking at two minutes before we're getting any work in. It's just too Ref, long. Yeah, refing uh the that that set grip has definitely come a long way since uh back of the day i had a question um we got in a little debate last night on whether big matches should end on T devin laird is in the chat well if you wouldn't believe why would why would bother same oh i only got uh halfway devin laird in the chat so is devin laird gonna win or michael todd which pick 50 50 50 50 i do not know it's gonna be you know it's gonna be close because but you know going back to what we were talking about on the rules we got in this kind of debate last night and i'm i'm of the camp like this is a big show this is a shot you know we don't want this to end on terrible calls and this and that and so like let's say you had a shady call you know i wouldn't let the match end and call a winner on on like a right. bad, you know what I mean? Like, hey, listen, if you're not going to make the calls, then you're going to run into the, the arm wrestlers being in charge and it could turn into a fiasco. I mean, you, what you want is the prize to be dominant enough that the guy understands that he has to follow the rules in order to capture the prize. If the prize isn't big enough, then his personal pride will cause there to be, you know, like, it's just like the Cataret michael Todd match. There should have been, Steve Kaplan should have told Michael and Jerry to go to their corners, shut the fuck up, and we'll let you know what the call is. But because it was, you know, the money's not amazing, right? The rules are suspect. The actual what happened was interesting right? Created a little bit of drama that Michael just overreacted in the WAL didn't have an authority figure there to put him in line. And they also didn't have the authority. The league didn't have the authority to tell everyone how it was going to go down. They gave a little too much power to the, to the pullers. Okay. I posted a clip last week from 2007 Mohegan Sun with Alan Fisher and Cobra Rhodes and uh, Alan Fisher had a really fast hit and Cobra Rhodes felt that he was cheated or something. And he said, Alan, you don't want to win that way. The refs had called Alan the winner and Cobra said, I, no, no, that's wrong. You know, that's wrong. And Alan stepped back up and said, all right. You know, he's so confident that he had that. He gave Cobra another match. That's more like what I was thinking, how these big matches should go. If somebody feels outright like cheated, the other guy should not take the win, even if it was called in his. Right. I got you. Yeah. You, I think that's, would you yeah, take, no, I think that's the most retarded thing I've ever heard in my life. So if you get a call in your favor and you win, and you get the big money, you'll take it. You'll go. I'll take it quickly. If there's not big money, then I'll ask him. I'll say, hey, my man, that money's mine. You can, I'll give you a respect match, but as long as the prize money don't change hands. The trophy, oh. I don't care, but the money oh. is mine. And if you're mad about it, you take care of it with that guy. There you go. There you go. That's but sells also, if I feel like I'm about to lose to the guy, I might not give him that either. Because the arm wrestlers know. That's why Allen gave him another match. And I, you know what? Cobra was hoping he didn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I kind of feel that, that that would solve my problem. Because the audience yeah, at home. The problem is, is when the guy who um, lost on the bad call 
beats him, and but doesn't get the money. And you know, he's like, ah, I mean, yeah, but the, now that solidifies the bad call. Cobra Vavoda says, What does Travis think of top eight matches ending and elbow foul wins? Fouls winning by elbow I don't fouls. think about the top eight. The top eight is a European event that is tragically boring. I do not watch it. I do not care about it. I don't, I am a United States citizen. I only care about the United States of America and our arm wrestling. That's it. So over there, they will call, they call like every little, they'll stop a match. On yeah, there's every- nothing wrong with the way they do it because they know that if they open up any small um, creeks or avenues, then it will open up Pandora's box, like what the WAL has in front of them now, which is utter chaos. So there's, there's got to be a happy in between. between. Yeah, somewhere in between, there's common sense. And it's the toughest thing to navigate when it comes to arm wrestling rules. Yeah, there's got to be an in between. I cannot stand the, we call every. Every little thing, and then the, there are some wall stuff that's like, oh, it's a little, it's a little ridiculous. I mean, okay, uh, fart McAss. Travis was my favorite for years till Saban crushed him. Sorry, I I gotta read. That's two bucks. Oh, okay. Okay, we're getting we're we're winding down. Travis, what is going Let's on? Get out of here. I just lo- I just saw Paul Italia announce something uh, in Oklahoma. Are you are you involved in that one? Or that's I am just- not. What's next for you? In July thirty of- first, Dave Patton Classic, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Yeah. Then I take a big hiatus because of football season, and I will be back in December. What you're taking that much time off? Well, I mean, I might if I can run a gig, but. Ezra's going to be the starting quarterback on the high school team. Tyson's going to start and quarterback on the college team. The games are Friday and Saturday every single week for three or four months. So it's not going to be much on my calendar for the weekend. When your kids get into the NFL, are we so cool that you can get me like backstage seats? No. What do you mean? We got too many family members, man. It'll never happen. You're saying that if your kids make it to the NFL, I'm never going to get invited to the Super Bowl? You're way down the list. Come on. Dude, are you shitting me? We got a fucking big family. You can only get two or three tickets. Dude. Maybe if he has like a 27-year career, I'll get you in. Oh, man. All right. uh, Maybe I can use you as a film guy to sneak you in a couple times. Rye Russ says this chat is way better than this podcast. Hey, Rai, bite me, bitch. <laughs> uh, okay, that, I, I would like to take some questions, but you probably want to get out of here. No, nah, we're out of here. Hey, uh, I have an incredible story to tell you about my last weekend's fishing trip. And I think with some right videos cutting, we could do some funny shit because yeah. of this story. So let's do it tomorrow. Let me know. Wait, wait, wait. You... I will call you because I'm not sure what you even just said. I you have, have video or you have a story? I have some video. I have some pictures. And I have an incredible story okay. about me deep sea fishing in Grand Isle, Louisiana, right below New Orleans. Okay. Mike's Madness, 499 Super Chat. Travis is going to go to Dubai and whip, whip both of them. So who cares who wins out of them? Yeah, they're both bums anyway. I would way, I'm way more entertaining than those dudes. All right, my man, we'll talk soon. So this is not our last show is what no, you're saying. No, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. I don't know about, all right. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, I guess Travis is back, but we'll see. We'll see how long it lasts. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, as you guys saw, or I'm my event is June 19th, Father's Day weekend, Long Grove, Illinois. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go. We're gonna do power hooks, dude. This whole like I dependent on the strap. I don't think, uh, man, s- straps take a lot of time, and I I 
I'm convinced that hurts our audience for uh, non-arm wrestlers. I, as the guy who loves arm wrestling, get bored to hell. In fact, d- during the Mohegan Sun, the photo, photo, I'm going to post a clip tonight that has some amazing stuff with the uh, Ron Bath. Um, amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, when they're applying the strap, I go film a completely another match with a complete different setup and sometimes get an entire match in before I come back that the strap has been applied. So when I'm trying to do like, let's say a live show, dude, that's proof that that strap kills the show. So anyways, if you guys are local to uh, uh, Illinois, come out ROTN. I'm designing a kick-ass belt. It's going to be amazing. Anyways, uh, Rye says, just joking, Gary. All right, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, good night.